Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Sologic and Five Pillar Practice. Today we're going to do a brief book review on performing Salah using the prophetic example. It's based on uh, the six authentic Hadith collections. Um, and it's by M. Mushfikr Rahman. My apologies if their name is mispronounced. Um, this is a summary edition. There's a longer edition that goes with the book. It's very well documented. Um, it's full color. So full color photos of every step of Salah. It also, so it goes through every single aspect of, of Salah, all the different steps from um, making the intention to the takbir and then all the different steps of, of standing and reciting, of bowing, of prostrating and sitting. Um, you know, bearing witness, um, all the various duas that you might do, the adhkar that you would do throughout. Um, it has hadith to back up um, each step. Um, as it's very well documented. Um, it's also, it's got a lot of strengths. It's very lightweight. Um, it also has rulings from the various medhebs, but it keeps them very, very short. So it gives you a bit of a toolkit. And I like this. And this is connected to some other insights that I'd had about us as an Ummah needing a very nice toolkit for reverts, for Muslims who are coming back into prayer practice who want to go more deeply into it. Um, this is an excellent volume. Um, before I left the States in 2020, I was uh, looking, um, I was exploring various uh, fiqh books from the various medhebs. Um, to better understand um, all the different steps of Salah and what kind of options we have um, as Muslimin. There's, there's a nice, um, and this one, it's, it's very lightweight, so I brought it along. Like I, I had nice additions from, from all, of the, all of the medhebs, and I really appreciated reading through them, and I gained a lot of insight. I learned quite a bit, and I'd like to go deeper. Comparative thick is a fascinating area to me. Um, and... There's a nice glossary in here, a nice index. Um, so I appreciate it. It's, it's, good. it's a good travel book if you want to just read quickly. So for instance, once I, I read through it once uh, completely through. And then during a second read through, I skipped over the Hadith and just focused on the steps of the prayer. And I noticed a couple areas I could tighten up. You know, prior to this, while I was reading the Fiqh books, I was also watching a lot of videos um, to see how people are teaching Salah online. I wanted a better understanding of this. Um, so this has many strengths to it. So let's just talk about something that could be tightened up a bit. Um, the biggest issue that I have with this book, which I would recommend, I, I, I definitely recommend this book, but the biggest issue I have is regarding subtle. So pray, praying with arms at the side. Now this is, this is the way that the Malikis pray. Um, at least a, a significant portion of the Malikis historically prayed this way before, uh, before recently when there began to be a lot of pressure on people who pray with their arms at their side and people questioning the validia, validity of that style of prayer. This is also the way that the Abadis pray down in Oman. This is also the way that the Jafaris, the Twelver Shia pray um, throughout the world. So it's interesting that so many people pray with their arms at the side and historically have within our Ummah. And our Ummah has, has diversity within it. Now, most, to this day, most Sunnis pray uh, with their, their hands, um, you know, right over left, whether it's over, you know, hands grasping all the way over, although people will question these. Um, and most people acknowledge, like this book acknowledges that it's, you know, valid to pray over the heart, above the belly button. Then there's a claim that, that at the belly button or below the, the belly button, it's only, there's only daif hadith with this. So I'm very concerned with questioning the validity of people's prayers currently and in the past and to potentially invalidate our ancestors' prayers. Um, and make us insecure about our prayers. I think this is highly problematic because when something has been passed down through many generations, this suggests that there's something to it. And um, I think that it's very, very healthy. Like, so as a, as a counter 
to this this weakness within this book because overall I consider this to be a strong book and I appreciate it very much um, and I've derived benefit and um, benefit from it but from the if I were to counter this there is an excellent article from a Maliki scholar um, and I believe it's on lamppost.edu um, it's it's something along the lines of cubed versus cubed in subtle or cubed versus subtle and it goes through and it discusses um, these narrations that are used uh, to oppose praying with our arms at the side. Um, I just think that it's it's interesting that we should we should be very careful of of invalidating people's prayers. And um, you know, I love all of the Medhebs, all of the Muslimin, and I want to make sure that we um, support one another and that we have options, that we have toolkits. Um, I know that many many Muslims have have the conceptualization that you follow your your method very strictly and pray exactly the way that it's taught within that method there's a similar conceptualization within the Jafari fiqh uh you know of, of following um their their um following their 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 leaders um in prayer um and i'm not part of their school i'm not part of any school i'm a muslim and I know that there were no Sunni Muslims early on. There were no Medhebs early on. These developed over, over a long period of time. And we're trying to make sure that we preserve the prayer as accurately as possible and practice the Prophet's prayer as accurately as possible. Peace be upon him. And I want to I wanna show respect to all those who have passed down and transmitted invaluable information to us about practice over the centuries. We should honor that. Um, also, it's just kind of interesting, like we do not, we're not supposed to have bigotry and racism within the Ummah. And our ideal is that we are one humanity. We were made various colors, tribes, languages, so that we would know one another. And it's just interesting that when it comes to uh, people criticizing subtle, it seems like a not so subtle way of criticizing our Shia brothers and sisters, um, which we want to find ways to harmonize and reconcile as much as possible in these times. Um, and it's also potentially problematic for our African brothers and sisters, so many of whom are Maliki and have historically practiced with arms praying at the, you know, arms at the side in prayer. And so some people might say, no, there's, there's no racism, but it's just interesting that it seems to be potentially pointing at, at people who are African and dark skin, potentially. We need to be careful of this and, and just kind of note that there might be some hidden biases, biases and bigotries. Let's avoid those things. Let's find ways of reconciling and harmonizing as an Ummah. Um, I'm going to discuss in some other videos um, this whole concept of, of organizing a toolkit that, that is going to be of benefit for new Muslims, for reverts, for those who want to dive deeper. And I think that this book is actually a solid starting point toward those ends. Um, so let's discuss that a little bit further in the near future. Um, like I said, Performing Salah Using the Prophetic Example, I would recommend this book. I think that it has um, a number of, of benefits. Um, I would encourage the author to just reconsider how they're presenting subtle and thinking about it. And just as an Uma, we need to reconsider this and, and be very careful of not invalidating or disrespecting um, various prayer styles that have come down as if they're, they're seeking to maintain a prophetic tradition. Because when you read that other article, there are a number of articles online that counter these um, the, the counter these arguments against praying with arms at the side. And I would, I would encourage us to, to look at these articles and think carefully about them and the traditions. So anyway, until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.